Hi, my name is Bernardo Souza Pinto. I'm an assistant professor at the Faculty of Medicine of the University of Porto in Portugal. I will present a tutorial on STEM-RAW, a package with est which estimates raw data for fault table cells frequencies from risk ratios, risk differences, and odds ratios. Primary studies often uh, present for binary outcomes pre-calculated effect size measures only. However, there may be cases where, for meta-analytical purposes, we would rather have access to the underlying raw data. It may happen that the provided effect size measure uh, by the primary study may not be the one that we are planning to pull or do meta-analysis, or um, that effect size measure that the a specific primary study provides may differ from the effect size measures provided by the remaining primary studies. In those cases, being able to estimate raw data, these uh, cells from uh, for full tables would be of great value. Let me show you an example. This study is assessing the association between allergic disorders and anxiety or depression in children. In particular, we are interested for meta-analytical purposes on the association between allergic rhinitis and anxiety. However, we only have the pre-calculated odds ratio. We can see it in table number three. here with the corresponding confidence interval. And we aim to do a meta-analysis of risk ratios. And uh, of note, it is important to uh, let you know that this is a cohort study, so we can actually compute the risk ratios, but we do not have them here as pre-calculated effect size measures, nor we have the raw data to uh, compute them, at least directly provided in the studies. We do not have that uh, all information we need directly in the paper. We know the odds ratio, which is 1.7. We know the confidence interval, which goes from 1 to 2.8. We know the number of children developing the outcome, uh, the event, in this case it is anxiety, so it's 83, and we can have them here. We also know the number of exposed children, that is the number of children with, who have allergic rhinitis, and in this case it is 119, so we may write it down. And we know the total of uh, number of assessed children. This is uh, present here in the text and is of 546, so we can also have that information. Of course, we can estimate the number of children without anxiety. We can estimate the children without rhinitis, the number of unexposed children, but we do not have much more direct information in the paper. So we still do not know what uh, are the numbers of children who are exposed and develop the outcome or who are exposed but not develop the outcome, who uh, were not exposed but developed the outcome, and who neither were exposed and not developed the outcome. But with these ingredients, we can actually estimate the values on these cells. These are the ingredients we need to estimate raw data using the estimate package, uh, which is based on formula uh, provided in a paper by the Pietro Antoni et al. So let's do it. So we will load the estimate package. And this package has a function which is called estimraw with an underscore. And here we have uh, all the information we need. We know that the ES argument, which corresponds to the effect size, uh, corresponds to 1.7, which is the value of the odds ratio. For the LB argument, we have the value of 1.0. This corresponds to the lower bound of the confidence interval for the odds ratio. We also know 
what is the upper bound of the confidence interval for the odds ratio. And that is the UB argument, and it is of 2.8. Then we know the number of uh, children who um, had allergic rhinitis were exposed, and this corresponds to the M1 argument, and which is of 119. For the M2 argument corresponding to the number of participants without exposure, in this case, the number of children without allergic rhinitis, the number is of 427. We add that information here. Then we also know the number of uh, participants who developed the outcome, that is the number of children who had anxiety. In this case, there were 83 children. And finally, we need to specify the measure argument. And in this case, we have the effect size measure being an odds ratio, so measure equals to OR. Uh, we could also have uh, risk ratios, RR, or risk differences, RD. But in the case of risk differences, we should always insert the effect size measure and uh, bounds of the confidence interval as proportions and not as percentages. So running this line of code, we uh, notice that we only have one solution. And these are the raw data that lead to the effect size measure, which was calculated to that odds ratio of 1.7. So we have now all the data we need. But let us imagine that we did not have the total number of children with anxiety, that is, the total number of participants who had developed the outcome measure. That could have happened. In this case, we would run exactly that same line of code, but we would not have the E1 argument because we did not have information on that. And in this case, we can see that we have more uncertainty. We had two solutions which would be correct, and we would have to rely on our clinical knowledge to know which solution was more plausible. And then within each solution, we have also some uncertainty because we have point estimates, but we also have minimum and maximum values that each cell could take. Uh, and this is based uh, on uh, the fact that there uh, may be roundings in the uh, decimal places. So for this case, we would need to consider this uncertainty possibly by doing a sensitivity analysis. If we present results with a higher number of decimal places, if that's possible, in this case was not because everything was presented with one decimal place, that helps increasing the certainty or the precision of obtained results. This package can also be used through a shiny web page at estimraw.med.up.pt. Here we can easily introduce the available data and obtain the estimates corresponding to raw data cells. For instance, let us imagine we have a risk ratio of 0 0.6, with the lower bound of the confidence interval being of 0 0.4, and the upper bound being of 0 0.9. We are dealing here with one decimal place. We uh, have uh, as the number of exposed that of 352, and as number of non-exposed, we have 376. Then we can see that we have for each cell, the point estimates and the minimum and maximum values. We have a lot of uncertainty here. Now, let us uh, increase the number of decimal places. Imagine we have the risk ratio being presented as 0 0.61, with the lower bound being of 0 0.40, and the upper bound of 0 0.93. So here, we are dealing with two decimal places, and all the remaining values stay the same. So here, we can see that the uncertainty decreases. We can have um, a point estimate of 30, we, uh, but minimum value of 29 and a maximum value of 31. So the difference is, is of one unit upper or lower. If we have number, we have information on the number of events, 
then we get only one solution. But once again, this is dependent on the information we have on the primary studies. So thank you very much for watching this tutorial. If you have any question or if you have any suggestion on how can we improve the SMR package, please let me know. Please send me an email. Thank you very much.